my name is Heidi. And I'm Dash. We're hosts at the Ontario Science Center. We're exploring how different kinds of energy can be transformed for use in our daily lives. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the different ways that we use energy from the sun. Let's look at how we gather and use energy from the sun through solar power, fossil fuels, and biofuels. First, let's talk about energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed. Now, the sun radiates huge amounts of energy in the form of heat and light. So how can we harness that energy and transform it into something that we can use? Well, one method is called solar power, which is generated using photovoltaic cells, or PV cells, which are made of silicon. The cells are grouped together to form a solar panel, like this one. Each PV cell contains two semiconductors, one with negative charges and one with positive charges. Together, these charges create an electric field. Light particles from the sun, called photons, hit the PV cell where the semiconductors absorb them. The photons knock some electrons loose from the cell. These electrons travel along contacts, creating electricity. This current can then power an object, like this calculator, or it can be delivered to a house through power lines. Solar power is a clean energy source, meaning it doesn't pollute the environment. It's also renewable because it replenishes faster than we can use it. Don't worry, we're not going to run out of the sun. Of course, not every day can be sunny. PV cells can't generate much power on cloudy days or when it's dark outside or in the winter time. But we can use batteries to store what energy we gather on sunny days. Then we can use it during the nighttime or on gloomy days. Another way we harness energy from the sun is by using fossil fuels. The sun provides energy to all life on Earth. Plants transform sunlight into food using photosynthesis, and animals use that same energy when they eat the plants. When plants and animals die, they slowly decompose into the Earth, where natural forces of heat and pressure transform them into new forms that we call fossil fuels. They can be solid, liquid, or gas. We transform that massive amount of stored energy into heat energy by burning fossil fuels. I did that at the beginning of the video when I burned the methane gas trapped in the soap bubbles. Methane is one of the main components in natural gas, a fossil fuel that can be used to heat our homes, cook our food, and even generate electricity in power plants. So what are some of the advantages of fossil fuels? Well, fossil fuels are an efficient, effective source of energy. They're great for powering large objects like airplanes. Hmm. Any challenges? Burning fossil fuels can release carbon dioxide and other harmful pollutants into the environment. Also, fossil fuels are non-renewable. This brings us to our third method for harnessing energy from the sun, biofuels. Biofuels work a lot like fossil fuels, but unlike how fossil fuels take hundreds of millions of years to develop, biofuels take hardly any time at all. Energy from the sun is stored in gas, like methane, which forms one organic waste such as leftover food, dead plants from our gardens, or sewage, yuck, decomposes. Burning biofuels releases fewer emissions than traditional fossil fuels, so they're better for the environment. Bonus, they're renewable. One type of biofuel is renewable natural gas, which can be mixed with traditional natural gas for use in our homes. However, as you can imagine, using biofuels on a large scale can have an impact on our food supply and the environment. Obviously, the sun is a really important source of energy for us on Earth. So remember, the next time you're riding in a car or doing laundry, thank the sun. Ah. 